Folks, we've got 50 hours, actually 51 point something on the Summit TX25 now. Thought we'd give you a little 50 hour overview. We've been able to use this tractor in every season. In the summer, fall, winter, and spring, in dry weather, in wet weather, in cold and hot, all that kind of stuff. So, had a chance to put it through its paces. Now, I'm gonna tell you the, the pros, the cons, the good, the bad, all the stuff that we've done with it and everything else. So this is actually an engineering unit. It's not a production unit, and I'm gonna hopefully have a production unit fairly soon with um, you know, the production loader and whatever other production improvements that they've made. But this was built in a test lab, an engineering lab, and so it's, it's fairly representative, but anything that you guys would buy would be even better, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So you're gonna look at this, and if you're nitpicking and looking at something, there's probably some improvements here and there uh, that have been made because this is, again, not what you guys would be buying. You would be buying a bit better version. Now, I have tricked out several of my other tractors that I've had in the past, like my 1025R, the 4066, and the 4720, and been doing so to uh, my Kubota M4 as well. And that includes things like swapping out the tires. I swapped out the R4 tires on the other tractors because I just don't like them, man. This tractor does come standard with the R14s. I've already told you about those. I love these tires. They're a hybrid, a combination between the R1s, the R3s, and the R4s. So turfs, um, the ags, and the R4 industrial. So you kind of get the best qualities of all of those. Very long lasting, good in all those different conditions. You can still drive it on your lawn and be okay, but you can go into the mud, into the dirt, um, in the snow. And in the, the packed snow and the ice, it's gonna handle well there too. It's not a snow tire, so it's not gonna be you know, like the Nokian tires that are out there, it's not gonna be as good as that, but it is still a very good overall tire. Absolutely love them, they come standard on the Summit. You've seen me install a Summit diverter kit and a third function uh, on both the John Deere 1025R and on a Kubota BX. This comes standard with that third function up front or a, a diverter kit with um, the thumb control on there as well, so you don't need to add that on, so that's an extra thing I didn't have to trick out. It also comes standard with the rear remote on here too, which we recently hooked up a hydraulic top link. Already having that rear remote on there is stinking awesome because it was ready to go with the hydraulic top link that I got. And also, we can do something like what we did on uh, the Kubota M4 and the John Deere 4066, which is add on a hydraulic multiplier to get more hydraulic circuits on the backside too. Um, so once we maybe add on a hydraulic snowblower next winter for this, we'll have the extra hydraulic functions on there to be able to operate it. Couple other things that come standard. Mirrors, okay? Everybody wants mirrors for their tractor. We get a ton of requests for it. We sold out of them. We still don't have more of those in stock. And so I know that they're a very popular item. Standard on the Summit, didn't have to add those on. RimGuard Liquid Ballast, our channel sponsor. In fact, we're big on safety here. It's a heavy tractor right out of the gate, but liquid ballast inside here to really plant you to the ground when you're using that front end loader. A lot of other good reasons for that too. Standard again, didn't have to add it on like I did to my other tractors. Even the steps down here, there's a step on either side, all right? We had to add a step onto our 1025R. This comes standard with a step on both sides. Again, I'm just, I'm trying to paint a picture that this is a tractor that comes with all sorts of things that I've had to add on to get other tractors to where I want them to be. And those are extra costs, extra time, um, just that are involved to do it. You can't always do it actually either, depending on the tractor model that you have. One thing we did add on was a canopy and, and this is tractorcanopy.com, all right? That's where you get the rhino hide from. That's uh, Chris and I's company, separate company from Good Works Tractors. I personally think it looks like a perfect match on the Summit TX25. Did an install video on it. Um, this is the one thing that we did add on that didn't have on there, but well, that and the top link. Those are the only two things that we've added on. The hydraulic top link and the canopy, everything else came standard on here. So paint that picture in your mind when you're tractor shopping. All right, so I wanna tell you a few things that I don't like about this tractor. Um, and it's probably the same things that you've heard me say before about not just this tractor, but smaller tractors in general. One is the three point lift height, all right? You just can't get a lot of lift height out of these smaller tractors. And so that box blades up off the ground plenty, right? But there's a few attachments, well, actually really like the, the landscape rake, that can barely get off the ground just because those tines are down so far. Uh, we used a cedar with it last year and that barely got off the ground too. And it's not that it can't lift it, it's lifting it all the way up. There's just a, there's a physical restraint on how high you can raise three point arms on a smaller tractor and get an attachment off the ground. So that's just a limitation that's there and it doesn't greatly affect a lot of things. Um, there's just a few attachments sometimes that it's annoying with. It gets them off the ground, but not as high as I want. If you're on bumpy ground, it kind of bumps the ground as you're going along, which, I don't know, it can be annoying. Now, staying on the three-point hitch, 
and I've addressed this before, it does have turnbuckles on there for the sway arms, uh, so you kind of, they're threaded rods. You screw in and screw out, so that instead of the telescoping version, I believe that Summit is working on a product improvement in the future to come out with a telescoping version. And if they do, I would imagine that's going to be retrofittable. Don't hold me to it, but it would seem to make sense because there's some very specific parameters there where either version would have to work. And so that's again found like on the 1025Rs as well and the 2038, even the 3E series too. So it's found on a lot of other tractors as well. I just don't like it. It's kind of annoying. I would love to have a telescoping draft link on there, but when I have a quick hitch on here, that really doesn't matter, right? With the quick hitch is on here, everything is locked in place anyways. It's just if I take that quick hitch off, maybe put um, a flail mower on or a postal digger on where you have to then adjust those uh, lower arms to hook things up and then retighten them back down, that's when it's annoying. And the other thing that I, well, I'm putting it in the category of don't like about it, or this is more like I don't want to do it anyway, even when it comes out, but that's going to be mow with this tractor, like mow your lawn. It does have a mid PTO, all right? They are gonna come out at some point with a mid mount or a belly mower that you can put on here. I think this tractor is way too heavy to mow with and I don't think Summit would disagree with that. I, I think that they're in alignment with that as well. Um, maybe you have real hard pan and it doesn't matter, you just wanna mow it down and get it done and use this, okay. Me, the ground's too soft here, you're gonna run it up. Um, <clears throat> it's just, well, I, I've, my opinion in general has changed on mowing with a tractor. I do think it's nice to have one engine to maintain and just one machine there and you can swap it out for every single attachment on the planet, but more and more I like the idea of a separate mower versus a tractor and so even if they come out with a mid-mount mower, I, maybe I'll make a video just to show it and that's about it, but I don't really have any intentions of mowing with this tractor at all. And the last thing I'll say that I don't love, but it's gonna come out at some point is there's no tilt steering on here, all right? So it's a fixed position on the steering wheel. I don't think about it most of the time, but there are uh, a few occasions here and there where I find myself reaching for the tilt steering mechanism and I can't find it anywhere because it's not there. But I use a lot of different tractors and so sometimes I'll come from one tractor to the other and just like muscle memory tries to kick in or something. So that's another one there I just thought of staring at it right now, but again, not the end of the world, uh, just something that's gonna be implemented down the road and isn't available now. All right, a few things that I really like about the Summit, okay? First one, it seems simple but it's, it's an oversight by a lot of companies, including John Deere, big time. On the 1025R, hate it. Engine compartment access. Look at that battery access. You know, you have to access your battery more often than you would think. And it's not like you're in your engine compartment all the time, messing and working on things. If it's a newer tractor, if it's an older one, maybe so. But the battery, seasonally, perhaps, seems to be the thing that'll give you fits. And so having nice, easy access to get to it, whether you have to jump it or pull it all the way out and replace it, is just, this is so nice compared to the 1025R. We have to do minor surgery to get that battery out of there. And you got easy access to the radiator screen, to the air filter back there. And of course the loader is on right now, so, and we have it raised up. And so it's kind of squeezing in there a little bit more, I suppose, but you can see visually how open that is. That's a really big bonus that shouldn't go understated. All right, now probably the thing I like most, love most about this tractor is the weight, all right? it is. It just feels like an old school farm tractor in that way. So many tractors are light, okay? And they're very tippy. That makes them tippy on, tip into the front. It makes them tippy, tip into the side. So the seat is still up high right here where I'm at, but there's so much weight down low between the frame, um, the liquid ballast that's in the tires and everything else. This tractor weighs about 3,500 pounds, which is very, very, very heavy for a tractor that's this size. This is a very small compact. It's bigger than a subcompact, a very small compact. And so it just is proportional, I guess is the right way to put it, where you can feel safe as an operator. I have not put spacers on this tractor and there's still been all sorts of hills. There's not, I mean, there's, this is about as level as it gets out here and there's all sorts of uneven spots and bumps and it's a rough, a rough property. And so I've been in a lot of situations where without spacers or dualies on a 1025R, for example, or the 2025R would feel really dangerous. And this is not giving me a false sense of confidence, but it's just giving me the confidence to know that I can go in these areas um, as a, as an operator and do the job that I have to get done without feeling I'm in a dangerous situation. That said, all that weight does come with a trade-off and <clears throat> I'm perfectly okay with it. And that is gonna be running a little bit smaller attachment, uh, especially anything that's kind of ground engaging, you know, like a tiller or 
Uh, well, even if you're doing a brush hog, using a brush hog and you're going up and down a lot of hills, if you're going up hills with a brush hog, stick with that, that 48 inch, you know, and a, a box blade, stick with a 48 inch. Um, just stick with a smaller size. And the reason I say that is, again, that's a lot of weight that's on this tractor. And so it's a 25 horsepower engine. And so that engine is, is always moving that tractor weight. And so when you have the attachment on there too, if you oversize an attachment back here, you're gonna pay for that just by, you know, bogging the tractor down a bit, um, just having to go, in my mind, too slow to do some projects because it's too big of an attachment. Um, the combination of tractor weight and attachment size with whatever load you have in it, it's just, it's just too much. So stick with a little bit, not too small, but just on the smaller end of the spectrum of attachments that um, are a best fit for the Summit TX25. The other thing I love about this tractor is the value, all right? And it kind of comes back to all of the extras that it comes along with. I didn't even mention the self-leveling loader that's on there. For me, I'm, I could take it or leave it on a self-leveling loader. Um, it is really nice and it is an upcharge anywhere. That If you're going to get one, that's an extra cost to get to go from the NSL, non-self-leveling, to the MSL, the mechanical self-leveling, uh, which this has. And so a good example of that is if you have a set of pallet forks on with an NSL, as, those, as you lift the loader up, those pallet fork tines tip back. With an MSL, those, as you lift up the loader, the tines stay level with the ground. So really cool feature there as far as that goes and, and the physics and the dynamics behind it. Um, I don't use it out here on the farm a lot. I, you know, if I use pallet forks, that's when it comes in the handiest. Um, other than that, I don't even use it all that much on my skid steer, which is like just a push of a button and turn that on or off there. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's the point being though, that overall, all the extra stuff that you get with this and at a really good price point, especially with inflation going crazy these days is I really think hard to beat. So folks, we've shown you clips from all sorts of projects that we've done with this tractor and it's crazy how much work we've accomplished with just 51 hours on it. And we're gonna keep putting those hours on, but we've been trying to show you different things, all sorts of tools and how they work on the front end loader and on the three point hitch with the PTO in every season. And I mean, that's kind of one of the reasons we have this land is to showcase tractors and tractor attachments and show you real projects. And a guy like me, I, I mean, I grew up with a family farm but I didn't grow up like farming, right? So I've been on tractors here and there, but I learn it as I go and a lot of you guys are too. And some of you know what you're doing and provide your feedback all the time in these videos too, which is great. But we're always improving, we're having a lot of fun. It's fun to use a new tractor out here too. We've had the John Deere's, the Kubota's, and it's nice to have something completely different uh, to try out and play around with and kind of showcase a little bit different size, right? That's not. It's not a subcompact, it's not a, a big four series either. It's kind of somewhere in the middle. And so having this opportunity for Summit to send us a tractor so we can play around with it, try it out with all the stuff that we're selling, uh, tractor tools, right, for the front and the back is, is something most folks don't get. And so I'm pretty blessed and uh, having a lot of fun. So if you want a complete overview on this tractor, we did one a long time ago, we'll link to that. Uh, we've also talked about all the reasons I chose uh, to work with Summit too, didn't have to, wasn't forced, wasn't coerced. There was a lot of good reasons to do so, and as a businessman, I'll take you through that. But on that note, I own a business selling tractor attachments. So if you need something for your tractor, if it's the Summit or anything else, we'd love to help you out. We ship all over the country every day of the week, so check out goodworkstractors.com. And if you enjoyed today's video, well, guess what? We have nearly 700 other videos out there. So all sorts of projects with this tractor and other tractors too. So make sure you browse our channel and take a look at those. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.